Hello everyone. Welcome to session on cloud computing, uh, unit number five, advanced concepts, Docker, container, and Kubernetes. In the in this video, we will see in detail Kubernetes. Let's start. So Kubernetes is a very well known container orchestration tool. It was designed by Google as a um, project, and now it is a uh, kind of a de facto or well very well known in the world of container orchestration. So these are the key components of Kubernetes. There is a node, there is a pod and service. So a node, uh, maybe a kubelet microservice, if we, when we are having a microservice running inside a Kubernetes, we can call that particular node as a kubelet. So that kubelet even sometimes referred as a microservice. Uh, we might have multiple nodes, like there is a master node and other nodes, uh, the, the simple nodes will be communicating with the master nodes and a single node will run multiple pod. What is a pod? A pod may be a container, single container, we can call a container inside a node as in a pod or a pod may have multiple containers inside it. So again, pod is a concept which may refer to a single container or multiple containers come together to form a part of a node and then we will call that as an a pod. A service which actually handles the incoming request and the it may do a job of load balancing for us. Let us continue. So this is the architecture of a service. Here we have a Kubernetes master and then there are two Kubernetes node, Kubernetes node 1 and Kubernetes node 2. If you look at the Kubernetes nodes, inside them you will find the, the there is a word called as a kubelet which is which refers to the microservice. There is a pod and if we draw a bigger view of a pod, a pod may have a single container inside it. Whereas the other pod may have multiple containers inside it. A pod may be a one container or multiple containers. Together these pods uh, are providing necessary services to create a microservice. A user is interacting with the kubelet to get actual service. This Kubernetes node are interacting with the master. The developer will be interacting with the API server for pushing updates, for changing or for integrating new services in the architecture. So this is how the container orchestration work. Now if we uh, talk about load balancing, so this is the diagram. So K8 is the word. Uh, another shortcut kind of word used for Kubernetes. So, Kate is uh, very famous when it comes to call Kubernetes. So, Kubernetes, Kate clusters. So, uh, look at this diagram. Here, there are uh, six nodes and each node have some boxes inside them. Let us say that each node have, these are the pods inside the nodes. And each pod, we know that each pod may be have one container or multiple containers inside them. And uh, these nodes again will have communication between each other. So these nodes will be able to communicate with each other. There will be a kind of a communication network, kind of a web using which these nodes will communicate with each other. Now a client will send or a user will send a in the application request or a service request to the load balancer. Load balancer will be able to communicate with any of this node with any of these nodes and this all nodes are again able to communicate with each other. The load balancer will decide on which node it is willing to schedule the job or it is willing to transfer the incoming service request. 
So, load balancer will play the job of selecting the node which will serve the incoming request for the client. So, this is how the orchestration is important. Without this orchestration, it will be very hard to maintain a lot of, lot of containers. So, if, you, if we go back uh, to the microservice architecture, now you understand what is the Kubernetes and what is a Kubelet and what is a node and all. If we revisit the diagram of microservice, this each microservice will have, a, we can call it as a kubelet. A kubelet may have multiple nodes. Let us say this is node 1 and node 2. This node in turn will have inside it pods and this pod in turn will have containers. So, quite complex architecture. So, without having a proper orchestration tool, it will be very uh, difficult to manage a microservice based uh, architecture of an application or uh, it will be very difficult uh, kind of a cumbersome job to have a application develop using a microservice architecture. I hope you got the concept of uh, microservices architecture, monolithic architecture, the concept what is a node, what is a pod and what is a service, containers we have already discussed during the docker. I hope this will help you in uh, understanding the importance of Kubernetes. There is a good tutorial available on this URL. If you visit this URL, you will find that uh, the Kubernetes lab is also providing an online platform using which you will be able to create a small Kubernetes cluster, uh, ready hands-on lab available. You have to just uh, 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 select some parameters and start the lab you will be able to see how the nodes are getting created, how the pods are getting created, what are the containers inside them and how the communication between different nodes happen. So, I do recommend please visit this URL to understand more about Kubernetes and see how to create a uh, container orchestration. Thank you.